Amen. Please remember that God has not given you the spirit of fear. Uh, I know a lot of people always watch the media, and a lot of people are worried about the, I don't even know if I can pronounce it right, the C virus. Yep. You know me, I pronounce my hard words by saying a hard word. So, uh, to give you some statistics, in the United States already this year, 8,000 people have died from just the flu. That's more than the entire world people have died from the C virus. So I recommend that you wash your hands often. And for you old time men and people, us old macho guys who've got to shake hands like we're going to break each other's hand, it's time to fist bump. <laughs> okay? It's less germ spread. It's time to fist bump. Get you some hand sanitizer, keep it by the door, tell the kids coming and going to keep themselves clean. Keep clean. And don't have fear. Resist. Rebuke. Do plenty of vitamin C and vitamin D3 and stuff like this, and just uh, drink lots of water. And you're going to be okay. You know? Make sure you're plenty of rest. Use, obey the laws of health. And, you know, then you always have people that read the stuff that want to try to give you fear. But I'm going to, uh, flying into South Korea, in just about a week and a half, and then into Thailand, where they say this stuff is. But guess what? Just like the message Andy's been preaching, if a snake bites me, I'm going to shake it off. But I'm not going snake hunting while I'm there. <laughs> Amen? But I've been in leprosy colonies and touched every one of them, and more than touched, hugged them, held them, sat with them, ate with them, and didn't get leprosy. And I've sat in the prayer lines for years now, with tuberculosis, cholera, diseases that I thought didn't even exist anymore. And Jesus Christ is taking care of me. But I'm not being foolish. I'm there on assignment. There's a difference, okay? So, so be blessed. I will talk to you tonight about a message I would call Knowing Versus Doing. As I travel all over the world and as I get in prayer lines, I'll begin to give people scriptural correction. People hate correction. They see it. Many people see it. I know we have so many C personalities here. Many of the C personalities receive it as criticism. But all it is is redirection. But what amazes me is a number of people say, oh, yeah, I know that one. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. Yeah, I know that. And I used to just be silent. But now I'm just saying, no, you don't. You have heard it, but you don't know it. Because I'm not talking to you as a secular person. I'm speaking to you as a spiritual person. And biblical knowing means actually, if it says, and he knew her, means he had intercourse with her. He was intimate with her. So I'm going to say to you tonight, are you intimate with the Word of God? Do you really know the Word of God? Is it part of you? Or do you have to Google it? Do you have to go look it up? Well, I can remember part of it. Now, I mean, we all have, I mean, there's thousands of scriptures. I understand that. But you're a three-part being. You're a spirit. And your spirit needs to be fed the Word of God. But if we had a lie detector test to hook everybody up to, and we would ask you questions, do you feed your spirit amply daily, or not even daily, but sufficient in the week's time, the Word of God? Many people, of course, they want to automatically say yes, but there'd probably be some eh, eh, eh. And then we wonder why we are easily oppressed easily depressed. And here's why. If the spirit isn't strong enough, then the soul will take over. Let me give you an example. My kids are on, a lot of our kids are on our cell phone. We have a big group plan, and so we share data. And so I tell them, if you are going to watch a video Put your plane on airplane mode. Now, they don't want to do that because they're afraid they're going to miss a, a, a friend's call or something. I, say, I don't care about your friend's call. Don't mean to be impersonal, but I really don't. I care about the extra charge for all that extra data. So, but we're in our own house, and we're hooked up to Wi-Fi. But if you get in a section where the, the uh, cell phone is stronger than the Wi-Fi, you'll switch over to the cell phone, and you'll begin to use data off of the Internet. You see what I'm saying? Whichever one is stronger is the one you're going to pull off of. 
So if you're more educated by what people tell you about sickness, about disease, about uh, finances, just about anything in life, you're going to pull from that part of you that seems to know more. Now, how many people believe that God's Word is truth? So why don't we, when we say we know the Word of God, why don't we obey the Word of God? You know, sometimes when I drive long hours, I get bold, I guess because I used to be a truck driver. I'll be like, oh, that's only 10 hours. <laughs> when you start driving, you're like, oh, man. <laughs> and I don't like the nighttime driving between 2 to 4 or something like this. That's, that's my body wants to sleep. So they got these little these little red bottles, and different color bottles you can buy at the gas station. It's called a five-hour drink. Now, you know, I can take one of these bottles, and boom, they do me about three hours, and I'm like wide awake, and I can drink. Praise God for miracle being awake when you need to have it. It's nice that you don't, but it's nice that I don't have to drink one of those every day so that when the time comes I have to drive, that I have to drink one. It wouldn't work unless I did it every day. I can drink one, boom, ta-da, I'm wide awake. It's like magic. But I'm amazed as I watch Christians who think they can do the same thing with faith and with God's Word. Oh, I don't have to do it every day. I don't have to get into it. I'll just wait until I have that long drive. I'll just wait till that next crisis comes. But the spirit realm communicates to you through your thought life and and I'm preaching off of my experience with people in the prayer lines because, I mean, I spend hours doing this in the prayer line talking to people. And I'm amazed. Uh, people think that they don't have to deal with it until they need it. And then, that's what I call crisis relationship. And I know, okay, it worked for you when you got saved. And we'll go to Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Some of you will try to stand on this scripture here. And you can for your salvation, I believe it. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When I got in a crisis, when I was ready to kill myself, I called on the name of the Lord. The Lord delivered me, set me free. And you've heard my story. Um, well, I, I haven't preached here too much, so you guys may not know my story. I'm, I'm 35 years of summer drug and alcohol free. Amen? Come on, somebody. Because I called on the name of Jesus Christ. And he supernaturally set me free. Now, I do know and I do understand that's very rare. I do understand that not everybody's set free from alcohol. Not everybody's set free supernaturally from drugs. I also know that many people are set free supernaturally, but they go back. And once you go back, it's almost like there's a clause on the fine print. One time supernatural, now you got to walk it out, baby. Come on, I'm just being honest here. You know, I could be wrong. I know my accuracy is 50%. I'm either right or I'm wrong. So now people, and pay attention to this, because I know this is nobody sitting here, but it's definitely somebody you know. So now people think they can just wait until the next crisis, then I'll call on the name of Jesus, and he's supposed to pay their bills, heal their body, and get them out of jail. I'm just going to let it soak in a little bit because I know there's somebody here that's listening to me tonight. There's somebody here that has ears to hear. You didn't come thinking you were the fourth member of the Godhead, and you didn't come to inspect to see what I was going to say wrong, but you actually came to learn and to progress tonight. Amen? Whoop. Breaking news. He's not working for you. You're not the king, and it's not your kingdom. Oh, I mean, I should, somebody would be shouting now. That's good preaching. Most people live their entire Christian walk coming to God praying with a blueprint, telling God how to answer the prayers and what they need. And I think they've confused him with Santa Claus. Jesus, I would just really like to have that little house with the white picket fence. I want to live a long life. Just what? Just what if he wanted you to live in Mozambique in a hut and die a martyr? We couldn't imagine that as being the will of God, could we? 
Sometimes when I read the Bible, it scares me. And, and I hope it scares you too. I read about James when the birthing of the church. Off with his head. A day or two later, an angel comes and frees Peter. Couldn't you see James's mom? Que pasa? What's up? Don't you love my baby? What about my James? But you said an angel. My boy tithes too. <laughs> wow. Our mind doesn't understand the things of God. Most people, they cry their prayers in fear, and they're never heard in heaven. And are only answered, now listen to this. I see this so much in the body of Christ, and it grieves me. Because it's a, actually a form, because the people that end up seeing it works use that method to manipulate and control people. Now listen to this. They cry their prayers in fear, and they are never heard in heaven, because fear doesn't take prayers to heaven. Only faith does. Fear deletes faith, but they cry their prayers in fear. They're never heard in heaven, and, are, and their prayers are only answered by compassionate saints who get tired of hearing the people cry and give them stuff that they're uh, praying for just to shut them up. Wow. See, the Bible says if you give and let everybody know, that's your reward. You don't get a reward. If you're doing it in a teaching way or something, that's a difference. But also, I want you to know that if you cry and out of fear and pray out of fear and get on the phone and try to get 25 prayer lines knowing you, you need something so you can get a prayer of agreement, that that's not building your faith at all. That's actually just letting people know you're hoping someone has it and you want them to donate it to you. Yeah. Wow. That's not the will of God for you. Your faith doesn't grow strong that way. Right. And then that person that meets your needs, you, oh, they're compassionate. Oh, they're going to help me. Then you begin to swim over. If you ever watch a, a, a natural show, you'll see people, you'll see sharks and different animals. They have these little sucker fish and little things that get on them and they live off of them. And sometimes we've learned to, like uh, Ruth started to with Boaz, she was living off of his field. Why should you live off the corner of someone else's field when my God wants you to have your own field? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Maybe it's because you really haven't believed what heaven says about you, that you're really good. That when he, I'm about to cry, like, that when he created you, everything he created, he said it's good. But in your heart and mind, you still haven't forgiven yourself. You still judge yourself by the words of man, that abusive husband, that abusive sister or brother or whoever, and you refuse to judge yourself by the words of heaven. That's good. Wow. Because if you don't feel good about yourself, how can you pray in faith? But faith doesn't stop. Jesus called the woman a dog. If I called one of you a dog today, you'd get mad and leave, and it'd be all over Facebook and everything else. But that woman said, yeah, but even the dogs eat the crumbs underneath the table. So she said, I don't care what anybody says about me. I'm coming for my baby. How many people have you prayed about your children just like her? My daughter's vexed by a devil. I, I pray that all the time. Lord, while my daughter was in prison, I had a blueprint. Lord, I just pray you give her dreams and visions of hell and heaven, okay? Then you move somebody filled with the Holy Ghost in the pod with her. And then, Jesus, you'll do this. And after 30 days, Jesus, that's a good scriptural number. When Moses died, they grieved 30 days. Then, Jesus, you can do this. And finally, one day I was praying, I thought, who do I think I am telling the potter how to mold the clay? Do I actually think in 30 days that a rebellious child of mine could be set free? Come on. It took me 25 years. And I was raised in a godly house with the Word of God, and she wasn't. Huh. Now I just say, Lord, 
When my mama was in a coma, I was told that God told another person that she had heard me praying for her to get up, but she already saw the children she was supposed to raise, and, and my mama wouldn't have died leaving unsaved grandchildren behind. She was too stubborn. But when she looked in the eyes of Jesus, she must have had this revelation. Oh, wow. You got this, don't you? If we could just look in the eyes of Jesus and say, well, <laughs> you got this, don't you? <laughs> I was talking with Andy earlier. We were, we were laughing about his, his boy, and he says, you know, he, he's, he's having problems with yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and everything else. And we walked back, and he, he, he came to me and said, Papa, can we go to your office? I said, yeah, let's go, man. We can go hang here. That's me and his, 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 his hangout place. Uh, before Kellen was, was born, it was just me and him. So when Kellen came along, he's like, what's up with you bringing somebody else in here? <laughs> it took a little working on that one. He's family, he's cousin, and he needs you, huh? But all of a sudden, I was sitting there, I was thinking about that conversation. And you know, Andy, I felt the Spirit of the Lord said, because I want him to be concerned with now, not tomorrow, and not yesterday, and not three weeks ago. He's going to be a faith man. He's going to be a miracle man. He's a now man. Whew. <laughs> oh, that excited me. Maybe he didn't anybody else. It was my revelation. <laughs> but I like it. <sighs> so now they think they can just wait until their next crisis. Call on the name of Jesus. And he's supposed to pay their bills, heal their bodies, get them out of jail. I do my famous who wants a prophecy for a new car every church I go through. And sometimes whole churches raise their hands. And I'll say, here's your prophecy. Get a job. Pay your bills, or establish credit, take care of the car you got now. And I'm going to tell you the same thing. Establish your finances. Quit eating your, the tithe and your seed and then trying to sow bread and wondering why this stuff doesn't work. Learn to feed your spirit the Word of God because the Bible says, in the time of infirmity, a man's spirit will sustain him. But if your spirit is weak because you never pray in tongues, oh, I know that, I know that scripture, but you don't do that. Well, the Bible says you're the type, well, I know that, yeah, but you don't do that. And if you do do it, you do it out of reluctance or just like paying an electric bill. It's not in faith. It never reaches Jesus. Do you know that Christ is the term, it's not his last name, but it's the, the, the term for uh, the Messiah? And that it's not able to be manifestly used until the New Testament once he was born? And in Hebrews it says, here men receive tithes, but there Christ received tithes. So Christ could not have been Christ in heaven to receive tithes unless it was after the ascension. So for those of you that are looking for a New Testament scripture, that includes Jesus saying he receives it. He's also, he's also the apostle of your confession. What confession are you giving him? Don't let this message beat you down. Let this message encourage you. Because I'll give you scripture that says, if you're a hearer and a doer, the storms are going to come. And he says, if you're a hearer and not a doer, the storms still come. Amen. So it's going to storm. I saw somebody on the internet said, Last year, it only rained two times. The first time for 45 days. The second time for 35 days. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's the truth. Hmm. Faith comes by hearing the word of God, not by crying until someone hears you. Hmm. It takes faith to please God. What does that simply mean? When daddy says, I'm going to feed you. Mama says, I'm going to feed you. You don't cry and you believe it. The children of Israel did not believe from breakfast to lunch to dinner that God would feed them. And they couldn't enter into his 
rest. You were in the new covenant. They were in the old covenant. Don't wait until your house is on fire to, to dig a well. Don't wait till you're sick and then start asking for prayer. I, I mean, I'm not against you asking for prayer, but what I'm saying is, is, see, a preacher or a minister of the gospel is like a farmer that's a combine machine. And you're bringing your crop, you're bringing your field to the farmer to harvest. If you've not planted any seed, why get mad if there's nothing to harvest? Wow, that's good. So take a picture. Uh, Nicholas, come here, please. Sir, come here, please. Sir, come here, please. Sir, stand back here. Face the congregation. You stand in front of him. Face the congregation. You stand in the front. Okay. Okay. Tell you what. Turn around. No, no, no. I didn't do my do-do-do very instructively. Okay. Now you come right right there. Now you get right here. I apologize. I know what I was thinking in my head. I just didn't communicate it very good. It was in do-do-do language, but there was no interpreter. <laughs> the body. The soul. The spirit. The Word of God is a seed. This is one person. Just broke down into three parts of the body. If this individual is reading the Word of God and putting seed on healing in his body, the seed has now got into here once he meditated on it. When he first put it in, it went to here. And when the mind of will and emotions meditated on it and began to believe it, it then goes poof and drops in here. Now it gets its roots in here, begins to cause the mind to think healing, not desire healing, but instead of thinking sick, get healed, sick, get healed, he's thinking, well, I just think healing. I don't think sickness. Then the body goes, oh, I'm so glad you think that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but now you don't read the word. The only time you hear the word is it comes and it hits the body, gets a little bit in here. You really don't understand it. The Bible says Satan comes immediately. It never makes it to the spirit, and the devil steals it because he has someone talk to you. Oh, that's not for today. My experience is not God doesn't heal everybody. So now you bring this sick body up to the altar, and I come, and I release the miracle power and the gift to the body, and the healing comes to the body, but the soul doesn't understand it to maintain it or to pastor it or shepherd the healing that he just received. That's good. Is that understandable? And the spirit's back there. Oh, da -da, da -da, because it's not being fed the word of God. But the Bible says your spirit can sustain you in the infirmity if you had it fed and if you prayed in tongues, the spirit can say, I command the soul to shut up when you're talking stupid. And body, you will get up out of bed. You will go to work. Uh, am I making sense? How deep is the seed of the Word of God in you? Does it only hit the ears of the flesh? And the soul was thinking about something else and what it's going to do tomorrow? And the Spirit's back there saying, it can't get here. Because see, here's what really happens. All around them, if I could draw a circle, is the spirit realm which you can't see. Now, this body can't receive nothing until the soul listens to the spirit. And now, the things of the spirit come through the spirit of man and it forms the soul of man who then says, rise and be healed. Oh, come on, somebody give God praise. Now, I didn't tell him to sit down, but. <laughs> no, no. This is to make a point. Amos 3.3 3 says, because the Word of God says, only the Word of God can separate the soul from the spirit. So it's almost like, even though there's three parts there, 
It's almost like it's a two-part. There's the soul and the spirit combined together that's in an earth suit. Now, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree? The spirit of man and woman is going to agree with the word of God. But what is the emotions and the mind and the will? The mind and the will is connected to the... the uh, here's how the mind, will, and emotions communicates to the natural realm. It receives its information from smelling, hearing, seeing, tasting, and touching. The senses. Those five senses now become the enemy of the one in back, the spirit. He says, by, the word of God says, by my stripes ye were past tense healed. It's already happened. But the, the soul up here says, the body's telling me it's in pain. I know that it says that. And that's when I look at you and say, no, you really don't know. Because if the knowing of the word, the intimacy of the word was really in you, it would be connected and the two of you would be walking. Oh, come on, somebody. So, a person asked me the other day, I did a healing school. They say, how do you walk in divine health? I said, by walking in the spirit. You might look and say, what well, looks like your nose is running. And I'm like, no, I'm walking in the spirit. I don't care what the symptoms say. I'm in agreement with the, 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 the word of God and my spirit. And uh, while you're out for a bunch of days, I'm going to keep going for a bunch of days. Now, it's rough. It's not easy. I don't want anybody to think that the word of God is magic and that Jesus is a genie. You're not going to get there overnight. I'm still trying to get it down. I'm still fighting it. But it's a grace that I have because I sit for days and hours in prayer lines with this healing thing flowing through me. Does that make sense? But I want to encourage you to start getting into the Word and the areas that you're weak in. The Bible says God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. If you fight mental things, why don't you start believing that God's given you a sound mind? Why don't you start speaking it? I just want to encourage you. You've got nothing to lose but a crazy mind. I mean, you would be surprised at the number of people that when I catch, oh, I know, I know. We used to have kids, people get on teaching, and they look at teachers, oh, we know, we know. I'm like, no, you don't. Because the fruit's not in your life. You're not walking in victory. The Bible says that Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. And people say, I ain't got no curses on the inside. I'll be like, yes, you do. You can't keep a job. You're always, you're always, always, always under some attack. Your finance is always under attack. You never have victory. You never have mental stability. That's a curse. I, I, I doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you're not going to heaven. But what I'm telling you is, most people use their faith just to get forgiven, and they stop there. Then they grab their shield of faith, and they're just trying to survive to get through life. Boy, this was a bad year. Last two years was a bad year, Nicholas. I'm hoping and I'm praying. Well, stop hoping and praying, and pray in faith, and declare and decree, and begin to become a creator junior, and create the life that lays ahead of you. Come on. Lord, if you're listening, that's three people, two raised eyebrows, and a partridge in a pear tree. I'm in Jackson, Ohio. Go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. <laughs> Don't start, Michelle. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles, or that means truth, of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of, of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So if you are a milker, 
God loves babies, but God can't use babies. And then because you've been in the world, you know, around the church in the world, world so long, you say, well, I've been here so long, I, I should be used by God. Where's the victory in your life? How can you teach victory if you can't show victory? How can you tell someone how the rivers of living water taste if you've never even burped them up once or twice? How can you lead in a full gospel church when you never pray in tongues? Are you quarter gospel, 16th gospel? I'm going to do a series coming up called the, uh, the, t the Two T's. Because the two T's, tithe and tongues, are fought more than anything in the Amen. body of Christ. Amen. I mean, look how it's fought. It must be true. My goodness. I just hope President Trump never says tithings of God because the whole world will shut down on tithing then. <sighs> Come on, somebody. I'm just letting this sink in. <laughs> Other words, there's a time you ought to be teachers, but you need to be taught again. Here's what I'm saying. Some of you have been this as long as I have, and I'm teaching and you're not. That's good. I'm getting hundreds of thousands saved, but you're not. Now, I'm a fivefold minister. I understand that not everybody is, but you should be more advanced than what you are, but you're not accepting the responsibility because you experienced a little bit of warfare and you're like, Shazam, I don't want none of that. <laughs> Just when things start going good and you've learned to shop by ba and you've done a couple of words of knowledge and this and that, and all of a sudden the devil knocks your feet off from underneath you and you find out your wife's going on, your husband's going on, your marriage goes bad, you lose everything, your finances go terrible, and you're just like, where is that Santa Claus? I mean Jesus. I quoted three scriptures and nothing happened. Well, you know, God didn't take Daniel out of the lion's den. Huh. You remember when Pastor Karen told you the story that she's not, you know, don't get mad, she's not a cat lover. And I always used to preach, if I get, get put in the, in the lion's den, I'd be like, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> you know? And when all those cats, I mean, the, every cat on the island got around her legs and started calling around her at that, that place in Belize. She looked at me, she said, this is because you've been preaching that here, kitty, kitty thing. <laughs> I've already got people telling me, are you really going over there with all this uh, hard word virus? Coronas. I was just afraid I'd pronounce it wrong. Are you teaching when you know you're supposed to be a teacher? I don't know how much longer I'm going to let you slide. But the word of the Lord will come through you to the body of Christ. Amen. It's destined. You can't just look like your mother. You are your mother. I'm not picking anybody out by name, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> repetition, you've heard this. Repetition is the mother of learning and breakthrough. You need to find the scriptures in the areas that the devil attacks you and you're weak in. Uh, you, you can put them on your smartphone. You can read them and then just play them to yourself. You know, when, when that devil attacks you, you can't even say, Jesus, you know those attacks? You can hit play. Your phone ain't going to get afraid. <laughs> For God does not give me the spirit of fear, but the power of love and the sound mind. Repeat, repeat, put it on loop. God does not give me the spirit. God does not give me the spirit. Get those areas so that when you get to that place in life, you've got to make that long drive. You don't try to look for that five-hour bottle of faith. I'm walking in miracles. I'm walking in faith. I've got the Holy Spirit. He never leave me nor forsake me. I'm an honorably discharged Marine. When I left boot camp, I didn't say, what, there's a possibility I might go to war? What? 
Are you kidding me? I just wanted the benefits of the child. I wanted to travel the world. He pulled you out of darkness, not so you can backslide and go back into darkness. He pulled you out of darkness and told you to come and be equipped and allow yourself to be trained. But because you haven't forgiven yourself, your spirit man's back here made perfect. Your spirit man's back here made whole. Your spirit back man is back here in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Your spirit man's back here healed. Your spirit man, and he's in an earth suit that's falling apart because the mind won't listen to anybody because you got hurt before, and now you ain't nobody going to tell you what to do. I'm here today to tell you that God is going to use a man to talk to you. God is going to use a woman to talk to you. You want just a relationship between you and him, but he says... You're not coming to me with the blueprint. You're not going to control your deliverance. You're not going to control your healing. Naaman thought he was going to control his healing. I want a big parade. I want the man of God. What if the servant comes to you and says, Go to Lake Alma and drink seven cups of water. What? <laughs> That's what he felt like. He said, There's cleaner rivers. She done, she done keep the leprosy, she said. I mean, there's no difference. What he's going to tell you to do is going to seem ridiculous. The Bible says the natural mind of man does not understand the things of God, and that it doesn't understand the things of God. It seems foolish. I'm like, Lord... You're going to send me all the way to Thailand and I'm not even going to preach to Thai people? What's up with that? <laughs> because see, the Iranians that have become Christians that have fled for their life have got refuge in Thailand. So I'm going to preach to Iranian people. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Pakistani people that have fled for their life that are on the, uh, I should say ambassador list, but it's not ambassador it's on the blasphemy list. They have a website, and if they say you blaspheme, if you get pulled over and you come up with they take you to court, to jail, to court, to death. So many have fled. Many are, are, are living in hiding and doing their hair different, and, and just, just because a Muslim person got mad at them, they didn't do nothing wrong, but they said, I heard them say the prophet was not a real prophet. It seems foolish to me. When I'm having a financial problem and you're wanting me to give 10% and then make an offering to it, that seems foolish to me. <sighs> well, maybe you need to tune into Bloomberg and learn how to sow. You just dig a hole and you put a seed in. <laughs> He'll teach you. You won't listen to the preacher, but maybe you'll listen to that billionaire. <laughs> so then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, I put 16, but it's actually 17. Sorry about that. Repetition is the mother of learning and mother of breakthrough. All breakthrough, listen to this, this is so good. All breakthrough healing deliverance is released and received in the spirit. Those three guys get up here quickly. Make your, make your body thing again. Thank you. Okay, so this is just the earth suit. You're the one running this thing because you really haven't surrendered to the spirit, okay? So listen to this. All breakthrough healing deliverance is released and received in the spirit. The things requested by faith are delivered to your spirit, wow. not your soul. If you don't walk in the spirit, but you're walking in the flesh... If these two are in cahoots and he's just getting dragged along, you're walking in the flesh, UPS, Holy Ghost UPS is over here knocking and nobody's answering in the spirit, trying to make a delivery. If you don't walk in the spirit of the flesh, you're not home when the delivery is made. Don't complain when there's nobody there to sign for the package. <laughs> I guess it's just... I'll return to sender. 
All right, go ahead. Give him a big God bless for helping out. Are you paying attention? Everything must be done by faith. Speaking his word by faith, hearing his word by faith. I know that I have to have faith for my physical body. So I better get some scriptures on healing for my physical body. I better investigate divine health and drinking plenty of water and, and taking my vitamins and doing what I need to do. I know I need to have faith for a sound mind, but it's, 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 I'm not naming and claiming it. God, God named it. Now I claim what he names. He said, I don't have to be crazy. I don't have to be bipolar. I don't have to be paranoid schizophrenic like I used to be. I can have a sound mind. I have to retrain my thinking to think like the word. I have to feed my spirit man and pray in the spirit to be strong to survive. So if I'm not doing those things, why should I complain and say the word don't work? Just because you know the word, the word doesn't work by you having mental knowledge of it. It has to go past mental ascension and come into the soul that explodes from the spirit. Come on, somebody. Therefore, I try my best to memorize scriptures in these areas and think on them out loud. Yes, I'm teaching you to talk to yourself. You do it anyway. In today's society, people think you're just talking hands-free or you're just singing along the song, but you're talking to yourself. And people say, oh, it's all right to talk to yourself as long as you don't answer yourself. Oh, I think it'd be rude to talk to yourself and not answer yourself. <laughs> that is impolite, because I can't even imagine it. Uh-oh, somebody's laughing too hard here on the second row. I walked into a store the other day, and your son was standing there talking to himself. I'm like, yeah, I know his mama. I know exactly why he does that. <laughs> so when a situation comes, my faith is strong, and I already know how to think, how to respond, and act when the crisis comes. Because I made a decision how to respond before the storm ever got there. And if you begin to silence this mind, will, and emotions. You see, your mind, will, and emotions is here. Quit trying to hear the spirit here. Quit trying to hear between here because he doesn't talk here. He talks here. When you talk in tongues, the uh, center, the brain center for speech is not activated. They've actually, non-believing doctors have done tests with all different religions. Every religion, the speech center activates when they chant or do their mantras and do their stuff. But when Holy Ghost Christians pray in tongues, the speech center is not activated. So you like, people say, well, I, I can't understand it. Well, you, because your brain didn't create it. Your spirit did. It, you, you can't understand it. It seems foolish. But when someone that does it says, I walk in power, when someone that does it says, I walk in success, Maybe, maybe you, you should listen. Ooh. Well, I, I'm, I'm having problems in my marriage, so I'm going to go to counseling this guy. He's been, he's been married, divorced 25 times. He's got some experience. No. No, don't do that. It's not good. I'm going to go to a seance and ask my dead relative how to stay healthy. No, don't do that. They're dead. They didn't figure it out. <laughs> oh, my. And because I've prayed in advance, I keep praying up because I read the word. I've got my mind, my body, my spirit, my finances, these scriptures. Now I'm able to respond in faith when the storm comes and not fear. Because this storm comes... And like, oh, my goodness, Karen's new van. It shudders and the transmission's going bad. Well, we, it's, I think it's pretty new. It must still be under warranty. We check it. It's 30 days out of warranty. Aww. So we take it up and have a look at how much it's going to cost. $3,500. And the guy's looking for this response on my face. And I just look at him smile. 
<laughs> and he's like the other guy, and they watch me. And I smile because in my heart, you know what I'm thinking. Praise God, I have a van that could have a transmission, could go bad, because there's many people that don't have a vehicle. And if my faith is less than $3,500 in my God, why am I serving him anyway? Oh my gosh, there's a $10,000 miracle. God, I don't even have the faith for $40 tithes. I don't know what I'm going to do. Who do I go to? The God I serve can't even help me pay my tithes. Wow. How am I going to do when my kid's about to die? What am I going to do when all of hell is coming against me? Good. I'm really believing for faith like this Hebrew children. My God is able, but if you don't, yo, homie, I ain't bound down to you. <laughs> I ain't bound to you. You, you. Don't even try bound them to me. In Africa, some of the women, the people, their culture makes them bow down. And I say, get up, that's reserved for Jesus. Don't you bow to any man. I scared the place, boy. I just screamed. It. I told the women that day, I said, don't you bow to men. And the men just glared at me. And I'm like, what are you going to do, kill me? So I died for preaching. What a way to go. Well, wouldn't it be better than the newspaper saying, fat preacher dies in Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> choking on chicken bone. The man of God died on the mission field. Yeah, that's how I got to go, baby. Go on. <laughs> and I mean, most people, most people are afraid. Most people are concerned. How? What are you going to do? This person comes and sits down on my prayer line in Amarillo, Texas. The eyebrows are done like a, some women have their eyebrows done. And I'm like, you've got man hands, and that looks like an Adam's apple. <laughs> but those aren't man boobs. you got breasts. <laughs> and I'm thinking, and I said, hi, what's your name? I'm Tony. I'm like, yeah, you are. You're a Tony. And I'm thinking, what is going? It's all right, buddy. Hey, I'm from Southeast Ohio. Give me a break. There's so much feminine on it, but I know that I think this is a man. I think this is a he, she in the process. And they're, they're coming to God to ask God for a healing. I'm God's representative. Now, will I represent Jackson County and old redneck culture? Or do I crucify the flesh and say, God loves you, man? Amen. Sir, person, <laughs> Tony. <laughs> this is crazy. Tony got healed quicker than anybody else. And so I, I went out to with the pastor afterwards. I said, hey, I want to talk to you. He goes, about Tony, huh? I'm like, <laughs> I said, yes, if you don't mind. <laughs> he said, Tony was in the process taking estrogen, had implants put in, was waiting for surgery and going through the psycho evaluation to have the rest of the surgery done. And God came to him in a dream and said, that's not my plan for you. Wow. And he got saved. Now he's in the church, and now we're, we're, uh, we're praying with him to get the money to get his implants taken out. <laughs> Come on, somebody. There's an African-American guy, Cincinnati, at my last meeting. Young guy, long hair, real long hair, just a worshiping. Man jeans, man jacket. Kind of attractive guy, girl with them. I thought, nice, nice looking couple. Answers the altar call. I'm sitting back at my book table afterwards. I can see the person standing there waiting. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a dude, dressed. I said, so did you like the meeting? Yes, I did. I loved you very much. I thought, well, it could be like kind of a Michael Jackson voice thing, you know. Michael talked like that. 
I said, so what's your name? Serena. I said, uh, how long have you been saved? Well, me and my girlfriend just came and I really heard from you. I just got saved today. What can keep that person from being saved? My stupid religious mind. I was talking to Jamaica. They want me to come over Easter and do a, uh, some meetings down there. Somebody's got to do it. It's Caribbean, hard, hot weather at that time. <sighs> Scuba diving. The Bible said preach to the creatures in the seas. It's scriptural. And the lady's interviewing me. I can tell it's an interview. What do you believe? She goes, do you baptize? She goes, how do you baptize? In the name of Jesus. I said, well, how do I baptize? She goes, yes. I said, I use water. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to discern, are they Jesus only? You know, I can still preach it. I just watch what I say because they are saved, you know. And uh, I said, actually, ma'am, I, I use both scriptures. I say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. I said, but to be quite frank with you, when it says the Son, that is Jesus. She was just checking to try to find out my doctrine. But I could have. But I didn't argue because God doesn't want us arguing religion and debating. He called us to win the lost. But you must bring yourself first to obedience before you can bring others. You witness and tell how great your God is. Then people watch you never walk in victory. Now, don't take me wrong. I know many people, many people, uh, I know I'm, don't confuse my confidence in the Word of God in me as arrogance of self, because I'm really not arrogant in self. I, I know my limitations. So when I forget, the Lord or my wife reminds me. That's their job. It's called helpmate. But I want to encourage you that medicine for surgery. It's not a second class healing. But if you get supernaturally healed or by faith you do the other, do it by faith. And do it without complaining. In the area of finances, have faith. But don't complain when it doesn't work when you haven't obeyed the Word of God. Saying, yeah, I know, doesn't make you a tither. The devil is looking for a way to block you from getting and receiving. And when you're not walking in the Spirit, you don't receive in the Spirit. And God is a Spirit. He's not natural, so He only gives to you spiritually. He uses mankind to give you things, but are people giving you things because you're crying and whining so much? They're just really feeling sorry for you. You always have the perverted mercy people. Oh, my. I, I remember people come to me and said, do you know that that, that family is really doing without... Uh, they just gave me the riot act, and I said, um, it's kind of their own fault. You know, this, this was many, many years ago. They said, why is that? I said, well, they're always coming asking that, for food to help feed their kids and everything else, but go to the house, and they have $500 worth of dog food and 15 dogs. If you can't feed your kids, get rid of your dogs. I don't care if you like that or not. I don't care if you like that or not. I'm just a visiting preacher. I leave in a few days, so. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew people years ago, the man was on Social Security. So all of his kids got Social Security. He got checks that came in the kid's name. Cashed the checks, gave 100% of the money to the kids. The kids had every Nintendo, every game, everything else. And the couple they always came to the church asking the church for help. While the kids lived like rich bandits, they suffered and went without. Well, it's in their name. I said, it's in their name to help feed them and clothe them, take it from them. They never did. The kids never learned to handle money. It was a mess. God is not the author of confusion. And he can't bless your mess. I guess we have to come to the point of saying, in all my education, 
I'm not as smart as what I think I am. And if I get another doctor degree, if I don't wear deodorant, I'm still going to stink. <laughs> I've raised the dead, and maybe you haven't, but it doesn't make me more saved than you. I just happened to be at a place where God needed to use me, and, and, and he snuck up on me and used me before I knew what was happening, or I would have messed it up. The guy would have died probably again. You know it, but you're not showing it. If this word applies to you, then wear it. If it, if it doesn't apply to you, then don't wear it. It's just like when I, when I preach about smokers. If, if you don't smoke, then don't get upset. Don't worry. If you smoke, you'll hate me for a couple of days, but I hope you quit. Because you're really hurting yourself. If you're not tithing and you, and you have fear of finances, I know people that tithe, but they never do it in faith. And, and they don't expect anything back. And... They don't put a demand in the spirit because they're like, no, you're not demanding God. You're demanding that the highway from heaven, remember that movie, Highway to Heaven? <laughs> that the highway from heaven in the spirit realm, because remember Daniel says that there was a demon blocking the highway. You got to demand your highways opened. But you can't demand if you're not obedient. <coughs> the Bible said, pay your vows then make a decree. What it's saying is, is your decree is powerless as long as you still owe. God told me that and started reminding me of vows I'd made. I made a thousand dollar uh, a pledge to Parkersburg. And I went back. It was like, it was like 17 years old. I went and stood before the whole church and repented and paid it right there. And I was teaching on it, and another man came up and said, hey, you told me one day that you was going to use faith to do something for me. I was like, oh, gosh, I forgot. I took care of it. Zacchaeus said, if I've done anybody wrong, I'm going to make it right. And when he said that, I love what Jesus said. This day, salvation has come to your house. Because salvation is about making that which was wrong right. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. We're going to be finishing up here. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him or her to a wise person which built their house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, but doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. And it came to pass that when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrines. Hmm. And unto those who have heard his sayings and, the storm, and they didn't do it and the storms came and they stood in front of their house and said, I would have done it, but the law of excuses brings no power to your rescue when you're disobedient. I'd rather have less and be obedient than have more than be disobedient. I prayed for a man today who's one of my, his family's one of my supporters are from another state. And him and his wife cried. And they said, we're so sorry that we can't write you six-figure checks. But that's our goal. <laughs> and I tried not to giggle. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm like really in faith with you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but they're serious. They've been some of my biggest supporters, and you watch, because they've networked with heaven, and they've distributed and done exactly what God said, and they didn't derive from it. Even when they needed it, God says, I can trust you. 
In the scripture, it says that when a plant, when Jesus tells a parable, when a plant begins to grow, it is pruned. So it'll produce more. In the same scriptures, it says when a plant is not producing well, it'll also be pruned. So I'll leave you with this parable. You're pruned if you do. You're pruned if you don't. <laughs> Give the Lord a big God bless, would you? <laughs> if you need additional prayer or prayer, additional, <laughs> you didn't get any. But if you need prayer, please don't leave without it. We love you. You are awesome, no matter what the devil says about you. Amen.